one of the kind of big, weird, weird to me because, I don't know, I've been studying this and doing this for so long, but whenever people will say, well, isn't that selfish? God demands you worship Him. How petty and narcissistic and arrogant is God that He would demand we worship Him? God doesn't ask for our worship because He needs it. He gets nothing from you. He doesn't need anything from you. In Acts 17, 24 and 25, says, God, who made the world and everything in it, since He is Lord of heaven of earth, does not dwell in temples made with human hands, nor is He worshipped with men's hands as though He is needing anything, since He gives to all life and breath and all things. You giving to God is like me giving one of my little girls a few dollars to buy me a birthday present. They didn't give me anything. That's mine. I bought that. But whenever we come to God and say, look, God, I'm giving you. You're not giving him anything. He didn't already give you. He doesn't need that from you. It's not for him to be fulfilled. He's already full in the Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, perfect love, union. He doesn't need anything from us. Worship is for our benefit. We are designed to worship. As we said, we do this automatically. We find something we like, we find something we admire, we find something we have affection for, and we celebrate it and we share it. We do it automatically. I just went through a few examples earlier. It could be sports, it could be movies, it could be food, it can be people. We find something that we think is worthy of celebration and we celebrate it and we share it. We can't help but do it. Here's the thing, though. Most of these other things that we will kind of direct some worship towards, at best, they're some temporary fulfillment, some temporary satisfaction. At worst, they can be destructive. You you, you put some worship on some things that are bad for you, drugs, alcohol, the pursuit of just carnal pleasure. Yeah, that can destroy you. But there are things in life that are not bad but we can put them in a place of utmost worship. If it's true that we're going to worship something and that there are some things that are better to worship than others, then would not God who loves us want us to worship the thing that is best? And what is the thing that is better than all other things? God. For God to ask him to worship, or for God to ask us to worship him is just for him saying, hey, you should put your affections on the thing that is most worthy of them. And that's him. That's not a narcissistic desire for him to get our worship. He's saying, you, you're going to worship something. That's how I made you. And by the way, the most deserving thing of your worship is me. Him, not me. Him. <clears throat> I'm not really worthy of that. I'm sorry. But here's the second thing about worship, about why worship is for our good, because we're not satisfied unless we actually do it. Think about the things that we place in our affections, that we offer worship to in just the more mundane context. When you're not able to share good news, right? when you're not able to act on that affection, what does it do to you? It kind of drags you down. You ever been infatuated or in love with someone? But for those who were introverts and shy when we were young, you just, oh, can't talk to them. Mm -mm, Too scared. Right? But what is it? It eats at you because it wants to get out. It wants to be expressed, but oh, I can't. But inside, it's tearing you up. The angst it creates. Or worse yet, you do express and they don't feel the same. So now you've got these feelings you can't do anything with. What do you do? It eats up at you, right? Worship unable to be realized actually drags us down. You ever known some really good news, but you can't share it? Right? I give the example of Dave. There's a reason why Dave was telling people my news, because it was good news and he was excited about it. What happens whenever someone says, hey, I've got something to tell you, and they tell you a secret, or they tell you some good news, and you're like, wow, that's awesome. Shh, don't tell anybody. 
What are you doing? You're gnawing at the bit. You've got to tell somebody. This is awesome. I've got to share it. I've got to tell it. I've got to let somebody know. And it just creates this tension and this angst inside of you, urging to get out. You ever have something that you were so looking forward to, but you don't get to take part in? Have a favorite band that comes to town, you're like, they never tour in this area, but here they are. I've got to go see them, but I can't get off work. Oh, you, you know, that kind of tears you up inside a little bit. You know, the younger crowd, I, I, I was, when I was younger, before I had a family, Every single Star Wars movie, every single Marvel movie, every superhero movie, I mean, th- th- that was my thing. It's what I was into. I was there opening night. I was one of those nerds in line, maybe in costume. I'm not going to admit to anything, waiting for the opening show. Well, now, fast forward several years, I got a family. And I'm not going to go, hey, babe, I'm going to open a night for this movie at midnight on a Thursday and leave you home alone with the kids. Bye. I'm not doing that. Oh, but I wanted to. I wanted to so bad. That's what happens, though, whenever that doesn't get a chance to get expressed. It brings you down. Worship fulfills and completes the joy that we have for the thing we are worshiping. Whenever we don't worship, we're actually shortchanging ourselves for the fulfillment and the completion of the ultimate, of the joy that we can have in that thing. And that goes for God. So it's to our benefit that we make God the object of our worship because He is most worthy and it's to our benefit that we actually express that worship because it completes and fulfills the joy that we are striving and longing for in the object of our worship. 